Welcome to the Lifestyle Medicine Update. I'm Dr. James Machino. You probably have never heard of the mTOR signaling pathway, but in many types of cancer, this signaling pathway is shown to be overactive, causing cancer to develop in the first place and or promoting its relentless progression. In this overactive state, the mTOR pathway stimulates cancer cells to divide and helps them form new blood vessels so that tumors can grow and spread to distal parts of the body, creating metastatic cancer. Now, most cancer researchers agree that regulating the mTOR signaling pathway in our body cells from day to day is one more important way we can help reduce cancer risk and decrease the risk of cancer relapse. It can also slow the rate at which we age. But to be clear, a short-term spike in mTOR signaling is a good thing as a means to preserve or gain muscle mass and bone density, which helps, us, helps prevent us from getting weak and frail as we get older and helps us prevent the development of osteoporosis. Consuming ideal amounts of protein and doing resistance exercise training turns on the mTOR pathway in our muscles and our bone cells for a short period of time to help us stay strong, enabling us to remain functional as we get older. So a short-term spike or burst in the mTOR signaling pathway is not a problem. In fact, it's helpful. However, if the mTOR signaling pathway in our cells is constantly turned on, then we set the stage for cancer, premature aging, and a variety of other health problems. Now, regularly consuming excess calories, overeating, especially if it raises your blood glucose or your blood sugar level into the pre-diabetic or diabetic range, and ingesting too much animal protein day after day, and or accumulating excess body fat. All these things result in the mTOR pathway being constantly switched on in our cells, and that's problematic. This situation is associated with increased cancer risk for many types of cancer, and increases the risk of cancer recurrence in cancer survivors. As such, regulating the mTOR signaling pathway in your body is something you should keep on your radar from day to day as part of your cancer prevention strategy. Balancing the short-term turning on of your mTOR pathway to gain and preserve muscle and bone mass, while counterbalancing this with general in inhibition of the mTOR pathway during you know, most of the 24-hour wake-sleep cycle, is a desirable strategy to help prevent cancer over your lifetime and extend your years of functional life. So how do you keep the mTOR signaling pathways in your cells from being overactive? Well, number one, don't overconsume animal protein. Plant-based protein foods do not stimulate the mTOR pathway as much as animal proteins. Animal proteins are very high in branched-chain amino acids, leucine, isoleucine, and valine. They turn on the mTOR pathway in a big way. In most cases, you can get away with consuming some low-fat animal protein foods like skinless chicken breast and turkey breast, egg whites, fish, whey protein, non-fat yogurt, but balance it out with plant-based protein foods as much as possible to keep that mTOR pathway under control. Stay at your ideal body weight. Being overweight creates insulin resistance and turn your insulin and, and insulin-like growth factor one receptors on your cells continuously stimulate the mTOR signaling pathway when you're overweight, thereby increasing risk of many types of cancer. We know that diabetics are known to have much higher cancer rates than non-diabetics. And this is largely due to the fact that their mTOR pathway is constantly turned on. So in maintaining proper insulin sensitivity and being at your ideal body weight helps to do that is an important strategy. As well, intermittent fasting and systemic undereating and eating a 10% fewer calories than your body really needs every day. These things help to silence the mTOR pathway, but it's not easy to do that. But even if you can regularly restrict food intake for 14 to 16 hours during your 24-hour wake-sleep cycle, it's been shown to silence the mTOR pathway and activate longevity genes called the sirtuin genes. So as an example, if you don't eat anything between 8 o'clock at night and 10 o'clock the next morning, that's 14 hours of sort of intermittent fasting, if you will, that helps to tone down the mTOR pathway and upregulate the function of longevity genes. 
Also, keep your fasting blood glucose level below 90 milligrams per deciliter or 5 nanomoles per liter or millimoles per liter by watching your carbohydrate intake and your waistline. Exercise regularly. Both aerobic and, and strength training exercise are helpful. They help to uh, tone down the mTOR pathway and they turn on the sirtuin genes, which are these longevity genes, which do a lot of great things for us. The other thing is that consuming plant-based foods that contain natural mTOR pathway inhibitors, things that naturally block the mTOR pathway. So the uh, apigen um, flavonoid, which is found in oranges, apples, cherries, grapes, onions, parsley, broccoli, green peppers, celery, barley, tomatoes, and tea. This particular flavonoid, apigenin, is, it has been shown to inhibit the mTOR pathway. Same with curcumin, which comes from the spice turmeric, and fisetin, which you find in strawberries, apples, persimmons, and onions, and the indole-3 carbonyl that you find in cruciferous vegetables, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, cauliflower, bok choy, kale. Um, these are great, great uh, foods to be consuming because they, they have a lot of preventative properties, but one of them is that they inhibit the mTOR pathway. Same with soy products and soybeans. They contain the isoflavones, genistein, and diazine, which are linked to a reduction in risk of cancer. One of the reasons is that it inhibits the mTOR pathway. Also, the flavonoid quercetin, which you get from tea and onions and red grapes and apples, and resveratrol, which is a polyphenol you find in the skin of red grapes. And caffeine is also an, an inhibitor of the mTOR pathway. And we know that regular coffee consumption is associated with a reduced risk of various cancers like liver cancer and colon cancer. And then, of course, in green tea, you have the EGCG, epigallocatechin gallate polyphenol, which is an, it's an inhibitor of the mTOR pathway, but, you know, EGCG, uh, is well documented as having many uh, anti-cancer properties, but this is one of them that it inhibits the mTOR pathway. In addition to the regular consumption of foods that contain the mTOR pathway inhibitors that I just mentioned, many health conscious people take supplements each day that contain some of these mTOR signaling inhibitors as an additional prevention measure. So for instance, many supplements in the marketplace contain curcumin that a lot of people would use to help reduce inflammation, but they're also getting the benefit of blocking the mTOR pathway. Or they take a supplement that has the indole-3-carbonyl, uh, which they would take for to improve detoxification, because it does that, enhancing liver detoxification. But it also has anti-cancer properties, and one of them is that it blocks the mTOR pathway. Then you have the soy extract products that you would see in products that help support prostate health and help women manage menopausal symptoms and does a great job there. But the isoflavones in that soy extract are also inhibiting the mTOR pathway. And then people will sometimes take EGCG, which is derived from green tea, as a way to increase the burning of body fat. It's been shown to turn on brown fat, which burns a lot of calories when you're at rest. But the secondary, secondary benefit is that EGCG also has many other anti-cancer properties. One of them is that it inhibits the mTOR pathway. The bottom line on this topic is that one additional way to help reduce cancer development and cancer recurrence is by not overstimulating your mTOR signaling pathways in your body cells on an ongoing basis. This can be done through the targeted nutrition, lifestyle, and exercise information I've provided in this update and further supported by use of certain dietary supplements as I've also outlined. So I've included the references for this information in the text below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.